Good morning. This is the Doom Amy Zion Church Visionary Outreach Broadcast. I am your host, the Leonard A. Edwards. I am so blessed and highly favored, amen, to be in your presence once and again. I, I mentioned before that this is the day that the Lord has made, but I, I really want us to cling on, attach on, get within our spirits, amen, that part about rejoicing, rejoicing. And you know, with all the things that are, are going on today, you may tell me, well, pastor, I really don't have a lot to be joyful for. Well, sometimes you got to reach back into your past. Look at what God has done for you in your past and given you the faith and the fortitude to know that God is still on your side. And when you become into that revelation, I guarantee you the joy of the Lord will begin to flood your spirit. The joy of the Lord will begin to flood your zone. The joy of the Lord will begin to flood, flood your household. Amen. When you get the joy of the Lord, understand that this joy that you have, the world cannot give to you. And that means the world cannot take away. No matter what's going on in your life, you ought to just take this moment right now, amen, to give God some joy. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I said rejoice. This is the Doing May Design Church Visionary Outreach Broadcast. Amen. Once again, I am your pastor and host, the Reverend Leonard A. Edwards. I encourage you to um, continue to use the chat room. Amen. To continue to communicate not only to me, but communicate to one another. It is this place within the chat room that we give God praise also. Amen. It's not the only place. It's the, the also place for which we get God praise and to also bring greetings, amen, to our brothers and our sisters in Jesus Christ, our Lord. This is Laity Day in the Durham Amy Zion Church. I am blessed, amen, not only to have our Durham Amy Zion Church family, but we have our friends from the Long Island District, District as well as our friends from the New York Annual Conference and from Zion Methodism as a whole. So we are extremely excited about today, the celebration of laity within the church we call Doom. And so we are going to continue in our worship experience. We are going to worship in this order. Um, the call to worship will be done by Sister Sandra Green um, the invocation will be by Sister Najla Shabazz. The morning hymn will be led to us by no other than our very own Sister Donna Hensley. And our responsive reading on today will also be by Sister Green and Sister Kim Rothefox. Rothefox. Amen. And then after that, we will have our affirmation of laity led to us by Sister Turner. We will worship in that order. Give them a praise. Mr. Producer, I put it into your hands. Good morning, good morning, good morning, Durham family and all honored guests. I will bring the call to worship. Make a joyful noise to the Lord, all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come, come into his presence with singing. Know that the Lord is God. It is he that made us and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and bless his name. For the Lord is good. His steadfast love endures forever and his faithfulness to all generations. Amen. Sister Shabazz, will you come at this time to give us our invocation? Sister Shabazz. Heavenly Father, we come before your throne this morning, God, with grace, open hearts, and thanksgiving. God, we invite you into this service today, Lord. 
We pray that you will come before us in a mighty way, God. Reign on your people, God. Enter into every secret place, God. Open our hearts, Lord Jesus. Heal, God, where there needs to be healing. Restore, God, where there needs to be restoring. Renew, Lord Jesus, where there needs to be renewal. God, we are coming with expectation of what is to happen in this service today. We thank you, God. We praise you. We give your name the honor that it so deserves. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Did you hear me? Oh. Amen, Sister Hensley. Did you hear Good me? Good morning, saints. Oh. It's a, a blessing for us to see another day. One more time. One more time. He's allowed us to come together. One more time. One more time, one more time. He's allowed us to come together one more time. Mm, one more time, one more time. He's allowed us to sing together one more time, one more, one more, one more time. He's allowed us to sing together one more time, one more time, one more time. He's allowed us to pray together. One more time, one more, one more, one more time. He's allowed us to pray together one more time, mm, one more, one more, one more time. He's allowed us to shout together. One more time, one more, one more, one more time. He's allowed us to shout together one more time, one more time, one more time. He's allowed us to come together. One more time, one more, one more, one more time. He's allowed us, he's allowed us, he's allowed us to come together one more time. Hallelujah, and bless your wonderful name. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Sister Thank Donna. You, Father. Amen. Thank one more time, one more time. He allowed us to come together one more, one more time. time. Amen. Sister Anita Turner, will you please unmute yourself and lead us in our affirmation of laity? Sure. Good morning, all. We, the active members of the Connectional Lay Council, do solemnly believe and firmly advocate and admirably support the following affirmation of lay operation. We endorse and need an articulate self-purpose. We endorse and need open minds, a faith in Christian religion. We endorse and need people who understand all sides to questions, for herein is wisdom. We endorse and need human decency, good manners, humor and compassion for each must be considered as blessed as we. We endorse and need openness, truthfulness and honesty. We endorse and need courage to stand for each credo. It is our rock of affirmation. Our mission thus remains as stated that of actively involving more people for peace, justice, Christian teaching and learning for the brotherhood of man under the fatherhood of God. 
and the leadership of the African Methodist Episcopal Zion Church. Amen. Thank you so very much for all those that has moved our worship service up to this very point. Um, how important it is for us to lift up the laity. And um, for those of you that may not be aware or, 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 or perhaps you are not familiar with that term, the laity is non-clergy within the African Methodist Episcopal Zion Church. That means it's, it's the power of the pew. Um, as a leader in our church, I know that my power base is, of course, with our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. But I also know it works in connection, conjunction with the laity. That's you, the people. We are here to work with one another, lift up one another. Ultimately, the purpose is the building of God's kingdom. And we do that together. It is really the epitome of what Christian teamhood is supposed to be. That is the power of our laity within our church. It is the power and the purpose behind why we are celebrating laity on today. And with all the things that are going on right now, it is impossible for us to remain relevant, to remain together without working with each other. There's no I am bigger than you and you are bigger than me. We are all in this together. The power of the laity continues to be the driving force of the life of the church. I believe that with all my heart, that's why on today, in the little piece of the vineyard that I am over in the African Methodist Episcopal Zion Church, we are celebrating the power of laity. And we are just so very grateful. We're going to continue in our worship experience. Amen. We are going to ask that Sister Bertha Wallace unmute himself, or unmute herself, as well as Brother Jamil Harrison. Please unmute yourself. And um, we will um, ask that you will uh, come forward at this time and lead us in our Old Testament scripture reading, as well as our New Testament scripture reading. Following that, we will be led in prayer by um, Brother Ronald Slaughter. Brother Slaughter, you need to unmute yourself via your phone connection. Um, let us now worship in that order. Okay. Am I unmuted? Yes, you are. Okay. <clears throat> Good morning, everyone. I will be reading for your hearing <clears throat> from the 139th Psalms. And I will be reading from the King James Version. And I will start with the very first verse. O oh Lord, thou hast searched me and know me. Thou knowest my down sitting and mine uprising. Thou understandest my thought afar off. Thy compasses my path and my lying down and art acquainted with all my ways. But there's not a word in my tongue, but lo, O oh Lord, thou knowest it all together. Thou hast beset me behind and before, and laid thine hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is high. I cannot attain unto it. Whether shall I go from thy spirit, or whether shall I flee from thy presence? If I ascend up into heaven, thou art there. If I make my bed in hell, behold, thou art there. If I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea, even then shall thy hand lead me, and thy right hand shall hold me. 
If I say, surely darkness shall cover me, even the night shall be light about me. Yea, the darkness hideth not from thee, but the night shineth as day. The darkness and the light are both alike to thee. For thou hast possessed my range. Thou hast covered me in my mother's womb. Fourteenth, I will praise thee, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are thy works. And that my soul knoweth right well. My substance was not hidden from thee. When I was made in secret and curiously wrought in the lowest parts of the earth, thine eyes did see my substance, yet being unperfect in the book, all my members were written, which incontinence were fashioned when there was none of them. Now precious also are thy things unto me, O God. How great is the sum. Last verse. If I should count them, they are more in number than the singing. When I awake, I am still with thee. I read for your hearing from Psalms 139, 1 through 18. May the Lord add a blessing to the hearers of his holy word. Amen. Good morning, everybody. Um, I will be reading from John 10, verses 1 through 10, and it says, Jesus said, I tell you the truth, the person who does not enter the sheepfold by the door, but climbs in some other way is a thief and a robber. The one who enters by the door is a shepherd of the sheep. The one who guards the door open, opens it for him, and the sheep listens to the voice of the shepherd. He calls his own sheep by the name and leads them out. When he brings all his sheep out, he goes ahead of them. They follow him because they know his voice. But they will never follow a stranger. They will run away from him because they don't know his voice. Jesus told the, pe told the people this story, but they did not understand what it meant. So again, Jesus said, I tell you, I am the truth. I tell you the truth. I am the door for the sheep. All the people who came before me were thieves and robbers. The sheep did not listen to them. I am the door. And the person who enters through me will be saved and will be able to come in and out as they please and find pasture. A thief comes to steal, kill and destroy, but I come to give life, life in all of its fullness. I have just read John chapter 10, verses 1 through 10. May God bless his already blessed word. Amen. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is with me. Bless his holy name. Let us pray. I was glad when it said unto me, let us enter into the house of the Lord. Dear eternal Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord God, we call upon your name this day, a day like no other, Father God. You're the God of the morning, the God of the evening, and the God of our noonday. We look to the hills will come and help this morning, Lord God, nor how you kept us through the night. Lord, as we wrestle with ourselves, Lord God, you calmed us down, Lord God, with peace and joy and love. Father, we come to say to you, thank you, Lord God. Thank you how you save us, Lord God. How you, Lord God, renew us, Lord God. How you, Father, bring us to a place, Lord, called peace, Lord God. Peace that passes all understanding today, Lord God. Actually, Lord God, there are some people still, Lord God, rousing, Lord God. They have lost loved ones, Lord God, through this COVID-19, Lord God. And far some have been unrest, Lord God. Some, Lord God, it's going running up and down, Lord God, don't know where to go or what to be, Lord God. But Father, we ask for peace. We as a church, as a church family, Lord God, we ask for peace for every heart, Lord God.
We at this at this time of turmoil, Lord God, we ask you, Lord God, let your peace and patch it all understanding. Touch each and every one, Lord God. Father, touch them in the Lord, in the pardon of their hearts right today, Lord God. Lord, give them peace, Lord God. Father, we thank you in the name of Jesus, Lord God, because you are able to do more in the seeking whatever we can we can we seek, Lord God, today, Lord. Father, Lord, we need a friend, Lord God. We need a soldier, Lord God. We need a, we need a God can do anything, Lord, penetrate through our hearts and minds today, Lord God. Father God, we are hurting, Lord God. Father God, we are shut in and shut out, Lord God. We are social distancing, Lord God. We are wearing masks, Lord God. We can't touch, we can't hold one another, Lord God. Father God, we need a Savior to put our arms around today. We need a Savior today, Lord, to call apart, Lord God. We need somebody to talk with. We need somebody to, Lord God, to get an answer from, Lord God. Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord God. Father God, people sick, Lord God, in the body. The children are sick, Lord God. The world is upside down with chaos, Lord God. Father God, we call in on the name of Jesus, Lord God, who is able to keep us from falling from this day forward. Father, Lord God, please hear our prayer, Lord God, today, Lord God. But Lord, we know, Lord God, there is in you, Lord God, there is peace. We know there is joy, Lord God. We know, Lord, that is, Lord God, victory in Jesus. Lord God, you say, wherever we play our foot, Lord God, would be our footstool, Lord God. And we just say we are conquerors, Lord God, in Christ Jesus, Lord God. We just hold on to your unchanging hand. You say that everything's going to be all right. You say you are the way, the truth, and the light today in our hearts, Lord God. So far, we are calling on a Savior, Lord God, can do anything, Lord God. Lord God, we're talking about a Savior, Lord God, can heal us, Lord God. If we can hear, we call in on a Savior, can heal us, heal us body, and mind, and spirit today. We thank you, God, Lord God, for pulling into our life, Lord God. We thank you for watching us in the blood that never loses power. We thank you, Lord God, that you are able, God. We thank you, Lord God, you can set high and look low. We thank you, Lord God, you can do more than see whatever we can do, Lord God. You can save us, Lord God. You can save us, Lord God, in our unrest. You can save us, Lord God, when we feel feel sad. You can feel, you can pray, you can save us, Lord God. Father God, we need your savor right now, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Father God, the peace that passes all understanding. We thank you, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. Father God, in Jesus' name, Lord God. We ask you bless the young people, Lord God. Some understand and some don't understand what's going on now in this world. Lord, we ask you to put arms around them and keep them, Lord God, as they go out and about to go to school and at least go out in the community and let them take it serious, Lord God. Father, we thank you, Lord God, for blessing the sick, the poor, the shed in and shed out. Lord, bless those, Lord God. Bless those, Lord God, who, Lord God, is there to, Lord God, take care of us, Lord God. Bless the doctors. Bless the caretakers, Lord God. Lord God, bless the, bless each and every one in the nursing homes and Lord God in the facilities, Lord God. Father God, we ask you, Lord God, we reach out our hands today, Lord God. We ask you, Lord God, to take away the pain, Lord God. We get ready to enter back into a second wave, Lord God. Lord, let us be very reminded, Lord God, to call on your name. Let us grow near to you, Lord God, and be mindful, Lord God, to know, Lord God, all things work together for the good. Thank you, Lord God. I thank you, Lord God, how you just bless us through the night, Lord God. Like I said, someone didn't get up this morning, Lord God, but we thank you, Lord God, that you got us up this morning, Lord, and you fed us and clothed us and shepherd and got us ready for church this morning. And we thank you, Lord God, that we can look to the hills will come our help, Lord God, today. We thank you, Lord God, you're a provider, Lord God. We thank you, you're a keeper today, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, that you, Lord God, is keeping us in perfect peace. We thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. Father God, I love you, Lord God. These are your people, Lord God. As you bless each and every home, Lord God. Bless each and every one that's represented on this phone, Lord God, and uh, Lord God. Bless each and every one rep- rep- uh, represented in this world, Lord God. Bless your humankind, Lord God. And Father God, we just want to give your name the praise and the glory. 
I thank you, Lord God, for blessing my family, my friends, and my community. I thank you, Lord God, for blessing the red, the yellow, the black, and white. I thank you, Lord God, for blessing each and every one, Lord. And I ask you to give them peace in the name of Jesus, Lord God. Father, Lord God, this is my humble prayer. I pray, Lord God. Lord God, thank you. For in your name I pray. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, amen. Amen and amen and amen. Thank God, amen, brother. Slaughter for you. Thank you, amen, Sister Wallace, and thank you, um, um, Brother Jamil, amen, for leading us in our scripture on today. Um, <clears throat> it is um, my pleasure once and again um, to um, ask that um, two leaders within our church will come forward at this time to um, lead us in our um, laity response on this morning. Um, Sister um, Sandy, Sister Kim, will you please unmute yourself? Um, and then following that, uh, I am so grateful to have Sister Eleanor Poole and um, so many others to be a part of our worship experience on today. Sister Poole, after the laity res um, response, response of reading, we ask that you will bring greetings and that I am super excited for my friend for many, many, many years, Sister Vandy Stiff, lay council president of the New York Annual Conference, Amen. and so much more, so much more. Um, I'm going to ask you to prepare to unmute yourself because we're going to ask that you will bring us greetings on this morning. I'm telling you, I'm super excited to have my friends be with me on today, to be with us on today. But now, uh, Sister Sandy and Sister Kim, will you lead us in our laity response? Amen, amen, amen. Finally, be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his power. Put on the whole armor of God so that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For our struggle is not against enemies of blood and flesh but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the cosmic powers of this present darkness, against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places. Therefore, take upon the whole armor of God so that you may be able to withstand on that evil day and having done everything to stand firm. Stand therefore and fasten the belt of truth around your waist and put on the breastplate of righteousness. As shoes for your feet, put on whatever you will make you ready to proclaim the gospel of peace. With all of these, take the shield of faith, with which you will be able to quench all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Peace be to the whole community and love with faith from God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Together. Grace, Grace be with all who have an underlying love, divine love for mm -hmm. our love, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Sister Eleanor Poole. President of Long Island District Lay Council. Sister Eleanor Poole. Good morning, all. I'm sorry about my camera. It's going on and off. I don't know what's wrong with it, but to God be the glory. To the pastor, Reverend Leonard Edwards, to the presiding elder, Reverend Keith I. Harris, all clergy, and pastors assembled, to all the church members, family, and friends, I greet you from the Long Island District, the Loving Long Island Lake Council District. 
I'm truly excited to be here today. Uh, I had to really give it a hard thought because I'm missing my own church service. It is not only encouraging for me to um, be here and that you invited me, but you also put a lot of work. You went over and beyond, Miss Sandy, to make this program work. So I would like to thank you from the district uh, for your hard work and making this a successful program. And to, uh, also to Reverend Edwards, I really thank you again, as always, you have our backs with you and you support us with your, you give us your unwavering support. So again, thank you. God bless. Amen. Sister uh, Mandy Stiff, New York Annual Conference, um, President of Laity. Amen. Sister Mandy Stiff. Good morning to Reverend Edwards, who's the pastor of this church, to the presiding elder in absentia, to the members of the Long Island District, to persons who are on the Zoom, say are not members of Long Island District, good morning. First, I wanna thank you for asking me to be on here. That's one thing I do, I do appreciate about Zoom is that you could be more than one place at the same time and have not left your house. <laughs> I need to acknowledge, yes, Reverend Edwards is a good friend of mine. We've been friends for a long, long time. And I also appreciate, first of all, his mother and I, him and my mother say I have the same birthday. Amen. So that's one friendship we have. Then I also have to thank him for the way he treated my mother when she was here. I thank you publicly for that. Um, Dr. David Aiken, I have not seen you in a long time, but I can't wait to hear your message. And I also want to publicly thank you for the treatment of my mother while she was here. You gave her all the respect that she could get. I'm looking forward to this message. I thank you again for inviting me. Oh, to Eleanor, my partner in the struggle. Good morning to you, and I would like to acknowledge your presence on this call. I have so many friends on here that I'm not going to start calling names, but you know I love each one of you and hope to see you real soon. Thank you. Amen, amen, amen. Thank you so very much, uh, Sister Eleanor Poole and uh, Sister Randy Stiff. Truly, um, truly, you are um, great leaders within um, our church family. Um, I count it a privilege. I, I tell you, I count it a privilege, amen, to be considered a friend um, because friendship is essential for me. It's, it's, it's essential to everything that I do. And you don't have a lot of friends. So I'm grateful for your friendship on the day. I'm also very grateful for the friendship, leadership, and the example um, set you know, by one who we call um, David Akins, Brother David Akins. Um, he is our guest preacher. I, I'm about to say, I was, I said preacher, I meant to say speaker, but I'm just gonna let that linger out there just for a little bit because I know in his heart, he wants to help everybody that he can. And I know you know, and I watched him over the years, how God called him out from Jackson Memorial. He was a, he continues to be a faithful member of the Jackson Memorial AME Zion Church. And a shout out to all the Jacksonites that are here. Um, I will speak with your pastor later on today and um, I will, you know, smooth it out for you <laughs> But uh, I am so grateful um, for his leadership, not just recently, but the type of example that he has set um, from the time that I've met him up to now. Um, he has been the ep epitome, not only of leadership, but in today's age, black male leadership. He has a fantastic heart. Um, perhaps that's why God elevated him to be um, president um, of our laity in the general church. Um, you know, his heart 
cannot just stay within that realm, you know, as a general officer. And so, you know, God said, hey, I have to expand your territory and um, move him over into a troubled area at one time um, and reorganize it, revamp it, retool it so that we will have the power of network within our Amy Zion Church for um, insurance of our, of our physical properties. He is head over that. He has, he has worked diligently to make sure that it remains solvent. And it was because of his leadership, his training, um, and, and, and still the, 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 the spirit of God that rests upon him. We call it the anointing um, that has led him into all these areas. So it is not by accident, nor is it by coincidence that the Lord laid him upon my heart to bring him from North Carolina, where he's at right now. I'm assuming that's where he's at right now and bring him into Bayshore because of the Zoom and the video broadcast, and we are able to have him on today to be our speaker, speaking to us, of course, on laity, but of course, he's speaking from his heart. Of course, he is speaking to us about the kingdom of God, for which I am grateful. And so after Sister Tracy will come, um, please prepare to unmute yourself. Sister Tracy will come and lead us in a selection. After that, the next voice you will hear will be no other than the one, the only, David Akins. I pray you will hear him, give him your fullest attention. I know the Lord will speak to him on today. God bless you, my friend. I love you with the love of Jesus Christ. Sister Tracy, please bless us. Amen. God bless you. Thank you, God. I lift my hands in total adoration unto you. You reign on the throne. For you are God and God alone. Because of you, my cloudy days are gone. And I can sing to you this song. I just want to say that I love you more than anything. I lift my hands in total adoration unto you. You reign on the throne, for you are God and God alone. Because of you, my cloudy days are gone. And I can sing to you this song. I just want to say that I love you more than anything. Wrap me in your arms. You are the shelter from the storm. When all my friends are gone, you're right there all alone. I'll never know a love like this before. And I just want to say that I love you more than anything. I love you, Jesus. I worship and adore you. Just want to tell you Lord, I love you more than anything. Oh, I love you, Jesus. I worship and adore you. Just want to tell you, Lord, I love you more than anything. Oh, I love you, Jesus. Yes, I worship and adore you. I just want to 
to tell you, Lord, I love you more than anything. Oh, I love you, Jesus. I worship and I adore you. I just want to tell you. I just want to tell you. I just want to tell you I love you. I just want to tell you I adore you. I just want to tell you, Lord, I love you more than anything. Oh, Lord, Lord, I love you more than anything, Lord. Lord, I love you more than anything. Hallelujah. Yes, Bless the Lord. God bless you. Mm-hmm. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, my. My. My joy is, is bubbling up in me. Having heard your prayers, your songs, your greetings. Does my heart good to be able to stand before you at the invitation of my friend and the pastor of the Durham AME Zion Church, the Reverend Leonard Edwards. We have established a good relationship down through the years even a friendship, and I'm thankful for that. Thank you for having the confidence in me to have me to come before you, your congregation and friends, guests of the uh, Durham Church. I want to also thank Sister Sandra Green, who is the president of the lay council at Durham. I have had good conversation with her uh, over the past days, recent days. We enjoyed each other's testimony on last night, uh, sharing about the goodness of God. And I got a good sense of where her Heart is. Lord blessed her with uh, another birthday. So, Sister Sandra, happy birthday. God bless you. I want to acknowledge, too, the presence of any other Reverend clergy that may be with us during this service. Certainly want to acknowledge my Long Island District. President, Sister Eleanor Poole, who just keep on ticking and ticking and ticking and doing the Lord's work. And then my dear friend, Sister uh, Randy Stitt. Randy <laughs> has been around for a while. I obviously got to know her, or uh, of her at least, uh, through uh, her mother. Dr. Betty Stitt, Uh, Randy truly carries her legacy on as she leads the uh, New York Conference Lake Council. But beyond that, she's also working on the connectional level as the regional director of the Lake Council uh, for the Northeastern Episcopal District. Randy, I can say a whole lot about you uh, and it's all good and I'm thankful to be able to call you a friend and to have uh, served with you down through the years. I need also to acknowledge uh, the presence of uh, my family, uh, not not to exclude, uh, but to include my Jackson family. I've seen some names on the screen 
from Jackson, and I'm very, very happy uh, that you're with us today. I do want to acknowledge uh, my wife, who's here with me in Charlotte, Mary. Whew. She keeps me busy, but it's always good to have her by my side. She's my biggest cheerleader and biggest uh, source of inspiration. I have children in New York there. We are miles and miles apart and in Atlanta. Uh, and uh, I sure wished I could be with you all to be able to hug you and, and, uh, and just, just greet you face to face. But we're thankful for what it is today that we can, that we can do so. Uh, through this means. We're going to try to move on and not take too much of your time. If I stick to the script, I should be done in at least an hour. <clears throat> By that time, I'll probably be speaking to myself, I'm sure. But we'll, uh, we'll, <laughs> we'll do all that we can to uh, get through a message that God has laid up on my heart. And um, the pastor mentioned the work that I have been called to. I'm thankful that I am able to serve the church in the capacity where I find myself today. It is sometimes challenging, but through it all, every step of the way, I've asked for God to lead me for him to make decisions for me and to make the work that we do a blessing for his church. He's been faithful in that regard. Again, I am thankful. I want to begin with the scripture that was laid on my heart. It's found in uh, the book of the, uh, yeah, the book of Matthew chapter five, verses 13 through 16. You are the salt of the earth, but what good is salt if it has lost its flavor? Can you make it salty again? It would be thrown out and trampled underfoot as worthless. You are the light of the world like a city on a hilltop that cannot be hidden. No one lights a lamp and then put it under a basket. Instead, a lamp is placed on a stand where it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your good deeds shine out for all to see so that everyone will praise your heavenly father. I was given Durham's theme for today, which is let our church's light shine. And I've chosen for a subject, reaching our potential. Let us pray. Holy Spirit of the living God, who abides with us. Open our eyes that we may see you. Open our minds that we may learn more about you. And open our hearts that you may dwell therein, we pray. Now pray, Heavenly Father, that for this, your servant, that you will speak to me speak through me and speak for me and let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight O lord my strength and my redeemer without question this seemingly never ending worldwide pandemic named coronavirus has impacted every one of us in one way or another. 
Some amongst us have even been stricken by it, but thanks be to the healing power of God, we are yet alive. However, someone that we know could be on a ventilator as I speak, struggling to stay alive under the love and care of dedicated caregivers who dare to risk their own lives, their own health, and even the lives and well being of their family members. Who they do that which God has called them to do at such a time as this. I pray that each of us are busy doing what God has called us to do, what He has made us to do at such a time as this. Every one of us has found it necessary and even critical that we adjust our daily routines in our homes, social activities, schools, and yes, worship services. I never dreamed that I'd be delivering a message to a body of church members via this household medium uh, with the household name now, Zoom. Yet here we are experiencing something that likely none of us could have envisioned doing just a year ago. Very recently even, millions of people here during this time, this, this strange, strange time that we are in, we looked uh, to our television sets and found millions of people here in the United States as well as abroad having seen it necessary to fill their streets demanding justice for black people whose lives do in fact matter just as much as any life matters. Only God knows what lies ahead of us every day of our lives. Several weeks ago, he called up on black voters in this country to guarantee the eviction of that vile racist of a president from the big house on this plantation called America. Challenges faced by our people to remain Christian is indeed daunting. Even so, the Durham AME Zion Church's theme for this day let our church's light shine gives hope to where Christians can be, where Christians are today. In other words, that theme uh, says to me, let the light of Jesus Christ shine brightly, both inwardly and outwardly, so that God will be glorified in spirit and in truth. This appears to signify a church that, that desires to be a light for this sick, sin sick world to see at such a time as this. Surely the members, leaders of this great church have come to realize that it takes more than words alone to make this happen. But Jesus himself criticized the worship of the real, uh, religious leaders in his day by saying that whereas they honor God with their lips, their heart is far from him. I believe hearts of the members of Durham are filled with the love of Christ. I believe the heart's desire to serve him, to serve him to their greatest ability. Because the Durham church can and will shine, provided the members resolve to keep striving to reach a full potential. Hmm. Members and leaders, huh, 
very well have come to the realization that it was critical that, uh, that they avoid certain of the uh, normal or usual pitfalls that cripple and stagnate effectiveness of a vibrant congregation. They must have resolved to allow the spirit of God to remove some of the negative factors that lead to the demise of his church. For example, they realize that it's not healthy for the church if the members, the leaders, are being angry, selfish, hateful, vengeful, <laughs> jealous of each other. They realize that it is, it is not in their best interest to allow fighting, uh, for allow it that uh, there's tearing down of each other or thinking too highly of themselves, or for that matter, thinking too lowly of oneself. Hmm. Instead, they have decided that they can do more in Christ's name. Hmm. Look into the central, central theme of not just the local church, but Christianity, and that being love. You know, in our Sunday school lessons for the past quarter, we have heard and talked a lot about love. Loving one another, loving strangers, loving our enemies. I well, had a tough time with that one. But I don't believe that God demands more of us than he knows we can endure. So I think that if we were to examine the core of our church, we will see that love is indeed rather in short supply. Uh, when we look at where, where, where Christ would have us to be as his disciples. So we have work to do. But if we recognize what the task is and ask for God to lead and guide us through it, we can rest assured that he'll be right there with us and that his goal, that he has made our goal, will be achieved. My dear brothers and sisters, I have long believed, often said, and will continue to believe and say, just as uh, Pastor Ed was indicated, the laity is indeed the backbone of our church. We're also the, the arms, the hands, the legs, the feet that go about during the ministry of the church. And we are in it. We are in it. We are working as disciples to do what Christ says, our ultimate aim is to bring others to him. So in other words, he's saying that what others see in us and how we behave as church folk or to encourage, inspire, motivate, even strangers to come and be by our sides. Yes, we do have work to do, but thank God we have willing workers, those who have committed themselves, resolved themselves to doing what God made them to do. <laughs> thank God. Till we learn and understand and fulfill the purpose that God has made it for. And I, I think of this often, and I've seen it in various scripture throughout the Bible. God made each and every one of us for his purposes, not for ours, 
He didn't make, in my opinion, and according to what I know about his work, he didn't make, he didn't make David Aiken for David Aiken. He made David Aiken for someone else's good. And not just his family, <laughs> but even strangers. And this, what I see my endeavor to be is to be that which God has called me to be. Now, we all have different gifts and different talents, but let's not try to take on somebody else's assignment and leave ours out because there is something for every one of us to do. No one and no two will be able to do this massive amount of work that awaits us out in the fields. So I say to you, Durham, let's keep on believing that there is something special that God has made us, made us for. The scripture tells us that even before we entered our mother's womb, that God had a purpose for our lives. That's pretty heavy. And I just wonder what would be the outcome if in my final days, and I don't know when that's gonna be, that I have spent time on this earth and never did what God made me to do. Wouldn't that be a tragedy? Oh Lord. <laughs> you know, looking back over the journey of our race here in America, I'm reminded of the words written by Frederick Douglass where he stated, and I quote, when a man rises from the lowest condition in society to the highest, mankind pay him tributes of ad admiration. When he accomplishes this elevation by inborn energy, is guided by prudence and wisdom, their admiration is increased but when his course, onward and upward, excellent in itself, thereby prove impossible what had previously been regarded as the impossible, that change then becomes a burning and shining light hmm. on which the aged may look upon with gladness, the young with hope, and the downtrodden an image of what they themselves can become. Hmm. Thanks be to our God. He saw the struggles, the conditions of our forefathers and mothers <laughs> in, uh, in a different light back in the day than those slave owners and huh, wicked people saw us. See, uh, through it all, God had a master plan for us. And we are, we're living part of that master plan today. Oh, just look where he brought us from. Look where he brought us from. We must be special in his sight. He must have a deep, deep love to bring us from where we as a race have come from. <laughs> mm. And his plan, by the way, <laughs> still, still works. And, 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 and it's not designed just for us, the adults, the grown-ups, who know more about our four parents passed and then we have taught our children about. But his plan is designed also for our children, for our children to be seen and treated huh, as human beings, not as inhumane, ignorant animals. 
Not one of us, nor even one of our children must ever be denied the inborn God-given rights and privileges, the dignity or respect owed to us as the children of God. Hmm. Nevertheless, we do in fact have some inherent responsibilities in carrying out God's plan. First, among our responsibilities is the matter of sincerely professing whose we are and to whom we belong. These responsibilities begin with our realizing that it was not our four parents by their own might who brought them out of slavery, but God and God alone. And we must remember that this same God will not tolerate such debilitating and detestable treatment to be inflicted against generations of a race of people that are owned by him and him alone. Being assured of his love for us, we must be strong in our belief and faith that what he did for our parents and their parents, he can and will do the same for us and our children. But heaven forbid that we wound up being seen and judged by him as a bullheaded, bad, fickled, and faithless bunch who never stayed true to their God. Based on what even I can see, we ought to check ourselves because unlike our forefathers and mothers who struggled to survive the brutality of slavery, unjust persecution, denial of human or civil rights, and otherwise endured long suffering. Too many among of us have had a taste of the good life and abandoned our roles and responsibilities as fathers and mothers. We have mentally and even systematically transferred many of our primary parental duties to the public schools, and yes, the church. Places where our children's prayer lives, biblical learning, and spiritual enrichment are not generally achieved. I have grave, grave concern for our children. Uh, I, I participate in a number of sessions of worship and Sunday school places in the denomination. It troubles me to see the limited attention that is given to our children. They go off to school and are now required to do virtual lessons and, and, and learning as such. I don't, I, I don't see, I don't sense much of that happening in the church for our children. I, I'm, I know it is in some place, and God knows I hope that's the case at Durham. I believe it is. But we have to invest in our children. They are the future of the church. They are the future disciples of Christ. Hmm. You know, I, 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 I think sometime maybe... Maybe we've had it too good. Maybe God has been too good for us. We know our children no longer must work in the cotton fields or tobacco farms uh, with sharecropper lifestyles. No longer do we have to live in rackety shacks, eat or sit in colored sections of eateries or ride in the back of the buses. We've gone from having one TV in the whole community to having one in almost every room in every house. From having one or two telephones in the whole community to practically every person having their own private cellular phones, even our children. We have forgotten what it was like when we had to make a meal out of fat back and molasses. There's no longer a need for us to to go to our neighbors or have them coming to us asking to borrow a cup of sugar, a scoop of lard, or a few spoons of butter. No longer must a family of 10 share one chicken on Sundays because now we can take the family out to restaurants and eat chicken and even steak. 
on any given day of the week. Having just one church suit and a pair of shoes that would have to last from one Easter Sunday to the next is no longer a matter of fact. Oh, we have overcome such inconveniences, but not on our own. It's because God had us in his hand. <laughs> Correctly stated, God brought us from a mighty long way. He did so because he wants us to be living witnesses who can and will testify about his mighty powers. Lay people, we need to go about telling our stories about when and how he delivered us, not just as a people, but delivered us as individuals. I have to, and it, it's up, it, it just, I'm, I just feel the responsibility of sharing with my children, with my grandchildren, where the Lord has brought me from. Uh -huh. Yeah, I walk behind the mule a lot of days. Huh. Wishing, Lord, just take me away from this. Look where he brought me from. I have to tell them about those days that I was dependent on alcohol or uh, marijuana to get me through the day. But I called on the Lord and I turned it over to him and he took it. Thank God I can say it's been over 25 years have I had a taste or desire for either. And I say it to them because I don't know where they may find themselves. And I don't want them to get lost in one predicament or one state of life, but know if they just turn to God and look to him, he'll show them the way out. Thanks be to God. Mm -hmm. mm. God expects us to take better care of our children. We should teach our children. <laughs> oh my, he wants and expects each of us to teach, counsel, protect, and love the precious gifts that he's given us, whom he has entrusted to our care. Therefore, I say, uh, my brothers and sisters, the time is now for us to get serious. And I mean very serious about dealing with the injustices that our children face today in areas of education, employment opportunities, and other types of fairness and equality afforded to that other race. Yes, we are indeed living in the thicket of most challenging, threatening, and dangerous times. We're living in a horrific era wherein our black men and boys are constantly in the gun sights of mindless and hateful evildoers who go unpunished for their ungodly acts against people who look like you and me. Because the stakes are so high, I, <laughs> one who was, who was raised by caring and God-fearing parents, cannot and will not let up for a minute and call in to the attention of my four children, seven grandchildren, and, and my newly born great-grandson, and children in general, that <laughs> we are somebody in God's sight. Unbeknownst to those who hate and mistreat us, we are children of the King of kings and no man or principality can hinder us this is the post for which i have been assigned and yes i'm sticking to it until the day i die until the day i die i will fight the good fight that's what god has assigned me to do i must do it lest my living be in vain mm. Despite all that we face, this is a message that's worth telling to our children day by day. They are somebody. They are God's special 
chosen children. And by the way, <laughs> I'm not by any means suggesting or saying to the children or to you that there doesn't come a time when all of us must stand up and fight, even to our last breath. Fight for the fairness and justice and equality that we so rightly deserve. You, my brothers and sisters here in God's church, I must remind you of some serious things that we must consider as we go forth in efforts to expand and grow discipleship. I uh, say, <laughs> uh, say that, say this, if our sermons if our services and various activities, even ministries are planned for the adults, but not the children, the adults, but not the elderly, the well-to-do, but not the poor and downtrodden, the healthy, but not the sick, the free, but not the imprisoned, <laughs> then who, who are we really helping? What are we doing to meet God's call, calling upon our, our lives? What message are we sending? And what does it say about our ministry? in his church? Do we hear the silent voices that are crying out for the help that, that the church ought to be able to provide? Let's save our children. <laughs> I'm, 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 I'm going to end here. But again, the children are heavy on my mind. I, I, I don't know I don't know what's so hard about teaching our children, our very young children, the prayers that brought us along. That, that prayer like, now lay me down to sleep. I pray the Lord my soul to keep. Hmm. If I should die before I wake, I pray the Lord my soul to take. I remember that prayer since I was old enough to remember anything, what happened? How many of our young children can say that prayer or any prayer today? We got work to do, church. How many of our children have learned that when they're in trouble, when they're the darkest of days upon them, that they don't have a scripture they can turn to you know like i do when we were very young we were taught the lord is my shepherd and i shall not want what happened church what happened oh maybe the life got too good for us you know and and and, and my goodness what happened to that song that we used to teach the young children jesus loves me this i know but the Bible tells me so. What's the matter, church? Oh, church, we want to shine, but we got to get it right. We got to get down to the basics of what we ought to be about as Christians. Huh, let's save our children. Oh, I'll leave you with these words of Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King. He said, the ultimate measure of a man is not where he stand in moments of comfort and convenience, but where he stands at times of challenge and controversy. Clearly, end quote, clearly none amongst us are just like Moses. None are like Harriet Tubman. We're not like Martin Luther King. Uh, we're not the captain of the precinct in our, our, our neighborhood, but God didn't call us to be that. He called on us to be who we are and what we are today. It is up to us. It, in, it is encumbered on us to live that which he has called us to live. 
keeping at the center of all we do, Christ, keeping at the center of all we do is, is that of love. Let's love one another enough to work together and do the calling upon the church. God bless you all. Amen, amen, amen. My God, Brother Akins. My goodness, Brother Akins. My God, my God, my God. What a powerful, powerful message that you delivered unto us on today. I can't even begin to unpack everything that you packed into those precious minutes that you allow the Lord to use you. Amen. Mm. And I am so grateful, amen, for the depth and breadth mm. that um, I, I just um, experienced myself hearing and um, also receiving, you know, what God is speaking unto us here at Doom and abroad. We are grateful, amen, once and again to you. Um, and, and that message, um, you know, that 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 went you know when we talk about the light and then you connected it to our children mm. our future mm. that our children are our future again i just want to say thank you um i feel much better i feel better amen so much better amen since i heard what the lord had to say to me on today Thank you so very much, amen, for allowing God to use you. And, and my brothers, my sisters, although we are on Zoom, you know that, you know, God is still in control. And there may be somebody that is online with us right now that needs to reunite themselves with the Lord Jesus Christ. Maybe you gave your life to Christ and because of circumstances, you know, you know, you fell back. We all, we all fall down. Mm -hmm. We all fall back from time to time. But you want to make sure that your relationship is right with him. Mm -hmm. And maybe you never, never ever gave your life. Maybe, you know, you never had that opportunity formally. Mm -hmm. We want to invite you into our, our body of believers. We are believers. Wait a minute. We are not perfect by far, by far. The one who we serve is perfect, but we as his followers are, are imperfect, but we are on our way to perfection. Amen. And it's a step-by-step -step journey. And I like to take the opportunity to invite you to be a part of this journey, to be a part of our inner network, our experience in being a child of God through the salvation, through salvation from our sins. So if you haven't received him, we invite you now to come on. If you need to reunite with him, we invite you now to come on and be a part. By perhaps saying these few simple words, God, I invite you into my life. Take hold. I humble myself before you eradicate, erase those things, those errors of my ways. Thank you for being Lord and Savior. I invite you to my heart. Lead me and guide me by your power of your word, of your Holy Spirit. And we give your name praise. Jesus Christ, our Lord, we pray. Amen. Amen. And amen. Thank you once again, Brother David Akins. Thank you so much, amen, for allowing God to use you. I, I said mistakenly, you know, in your introduction, um, you know, that, um, um, you know, you was going to be our preacher. But then I said, okay, you know, you know, he's not an ordained clergy, so on and so forth. So I said, no, he's going to be our speaker. But you, no, know, no, what? <laughs> you know what? You know what? You know what? You know you know, you started off speaking, but mm. down towards the end, it was no longer you speaking. Wow. And it got into a place called preaching. Mm. And I am grateful for that. Amen. Mm. I want to let you right. know, amen, that God got that anointing on your life. Um, mm. And um, we are grateful, amen, mm. for that. Amen. Thank you for the amen. privilege. 
to God be the glory. Now, um, Sister Sandy, um, please be prepared to unmute yourself. Uh, we are going to make our offering appeal and um, we press down, oh my goodness, press down, shaking together, running over, shall God get back unto you. We get excited in these parts about our giving. You know, we are excited about giving offering. Offering is a part of what the Lord wants us to do. <clears throat> and we are so grateful that you have been faithful in this season of pandemic mm -hmm. to continue to sow into the life of the church. I am grateful that, that you have shown not only an obedience to the needs of the church, but more importantly, I, I wanna thank you, amen, for being obedient to God, God the Father Almighty. You know, he says to bring all your tithes to the storehouse so that they may be meet in my father's house and prove me that I will not open up the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that you will not have room to receive. So I, I, I'm asking and making the appeal for your tithe. I'm asking and making the appeal for your faith seed offering. I'm asking and making the appeal, amen, for your giving. Well, pastor, how can we give? Well, you can give electronically through Giveify, and um, you can find us at Dome AME Zion Church. You know, hit that heart sign, make us, amen, your church to give, and you can give electronically through Giveify. You can also use Simple Give. And that's giving through texting. Amen. Giving through texting. Whichever way you choose, it's all right by us. And some of you, amen, may choose to use mailing. Well, we have our P.O. Box 562, Bayshore, New York, 11706. P.O. Box 562, Bayshore, New York, 11706. Or you can send it to the address of 1891 Hexha Avenue, Bayshore, New York, same zip code, 11706, 1891 Hexha Avenue, Bayshore, New York, 11706. Whichever mythology you decide to use, I encourage you to use it even right now in the name of Jesus. Bring your first fruit until the Lord, amen, so that God is number one, you know, and then everybody else, everybody else will be taken care of. I, I know the power of giving. I, I live by that power of giving. And I, I get excited about sharing the power of giving. Amen. The power of giving our resources, um, you know, unto the Lord. I am grateful for you, grateful for your faithfulness. Sister Sandy, will you come on and make the appeal for laity on today? Sister Sandy, thank you so much. Brother David Akins, I Thank you. I thank you for that amazing word. Um, that word of reaffirmation, confirmation, and just support to know what we need to do and um, to understand our responsibility as the lady of the church. I thank you, sir. Um, as far as offering the pill, Pastor already said what it was. Now, as far as the lady, lady is the body of the church. Every person that sit in the pew is a member of the laity. We are all lay members. We are the church. Our pastor, we look to our pastor, but our pastor is our shepherd. He is the head. We are the church, and we need to do as such. Um, as far as our offering appeal, I am requesting, and I ask everyone that can and will, if you could, upon pass your tithing and your offering and um, the different resources that you have already confirmed and appealed to, for an additional $10, which will reaffirm your lay membership and just build our lay council offering. I thank all of you for being a part of this service. I look forward to just continue to work with you. You know, I love you all. You know how we do. I love you all. And just, just 
just be with us. And I thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. Thank you so much, Sister Sandy. Amen. And, you know, she asks, you know, to send in $10. And that $10 um, does not stay here entirely, but um, um, we want to su support our Connectional Lay Council. We want to support our um, um, Long Island District Lay Council, as well as our Annual Conference Lay Council. We want to make sure that we are supportive in all of those arenas. You know, listen, you follow leadership. You know, you follow leadership. I want to follow the leadership that God has put over me. Um, and, and, and at the same time, I would like other people to follow my leadership. One has to do with the other. And so I am looking to support, you know, the bodies um, that, you know, the Lord has set uh, around us and over us, amen, to make sure that we are faithful over a few things. So thank you so much, Sister Sandy, and much, amen, Sister Kim, for those announcements on the day. Please um, adhere to the announcements, and we look forward to seeing your quality conference, Dormites. Amen. We look forward to seeing their quality conference this Tuesday. Amen. 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 All right. Well, Brother Akins, thank you again. Vandy Stiff, uh, Sister Vandy Stiff, Sister Eleanor Poole, and to all our um, friends, we don't call you visitors because you're surely not visitors, but thank you so much. Amen. For worshiping with us, for being with us. Amen. And Pastor for Edwards. supporting us in a wonderful, wonderful way. Um, Brother yes, Akers, yes. yes, sir. Yeah, just uh, one word. I was remiss in not acknowledging my pastor, the Reverend Isidore Branch Jr. and uh, presiding elder, good, good friend and brother, um, Reverend uh, Keith I. Harris. And, uh, and again, thank you. I am richly blessed by being with you all today. God bless you all. Amen. Thank you so much, Brother Akins. Of course, you have to say, you know, you know, give honor to your pastor, the Reverend <laughs> Andrew Branch Jr. <laughs> That's right. You know, uh, you got to do that. He is my brother. Uh, Look, amen, in Christ. Uh, both, both of us coming, our home church of the greatest of tenure, um, a and Zion Church in Mount Vernon, yeah. New York. And uh, we are so grateful, amen that um, we share in the same district together. Mm -hmm. and, uh, like I said, I'm gonna smooth it over for all your Jackson, Jackson folk. <laughs> I give them a holler a little bit. Later. <laughs> you're, all right. you're good, you're good, you're good. Yeah. It's, all, it's, it's all family, it's mm -hmm. all family. Um, hey, Sister Akins, we love you. Thank you for being a part. Hey, Sister Betty Ford, we love you. Thank you for being a part. Um, oh, yeah. Thank you so very much to all of you. I see some Westbury folks out there. Thank you also and uh, for being a part. And if I try to name everybody, I'm going to leave somebody out. So I'm going to just leave it as that. But we want to close out um, because there is somebody's birthday today. Um, I got to think real hard because I got to make sure I get the name right. <laughs> um, I believe it is Sister Sandra Green. Sister Sandra Green. <laughs> Uh, it is her birthday on the day. Yeah. Yeah. It's her birthday on the day. And so we are going to ask that brother producer, brother producer, can you find Sister Jessica and spotlight Sister Jessica? Amen. Because we are going to be blessed by her ministry. Amen. Sister Jessica, unmute yourself. <laughs> Blessings, everyone. Sandy, we love you. And even from the hospital, I love you pieces. Oh. And I just want you to know that happy birthday <laughs> to you. Happy birthday <laughs> to you. Happy birthday, dear Sandy. <laughs> Happy birthday to you. I love you, Sandy. 
Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Amen. 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 <laughs> amen. Amen. You know, Sister Sandy just about messed up now. <laughs> she just about messed up. We won't spotlight her right about this time, baby. Amen. <laughs> Thank you, Sister Sandy. Amen for working so hard to put in this program together and mm -hmm. all the participants. And, um, you know, I, I, I thought about singing myself. I probably would have got the same results. I probably would have <laughs> made her cry, but it would be crying because she'd be hurting her ears so bad. Amen. But we are grateful. We are grateful. Amen. To her, we are grateful to all of you. Thank you for being a part of our worship experience. Now unto him that is able to present you for falling and to create the body of Christ, which we now participate in. To the only wise God, I created be glory, majesty, power, dominion, both now, henceforth, and forevermore. Let all of us say in three folds, amen. 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 And amen. 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 amen.